uh, talking about the things that started me playing, uh, there were two things. One was that my brother had, Bill, he had an incredible record collection, 78 records. I don't know if you've ever seen any of those. Mm -hmm. Big black, thick records. Uh, and they were all uh, bebop people. Charlie Parker, Dexter Gordon, uh, Fashion Navarro, Dizzy Gillespie, people like that. Que su hermano tenía una colección que en aquellos entonces era pues, considerable de 72 discos de vinilo de, de gente de bebop, ¿no? de todo lo que ha mencionado. And I was also influenced by uh, the first time I heard live music was actually in my living room. La primera vez que escuchó música en directo fue en su salón. So when I was a kid, when I was about seven, we didn't have a refrigerator. We had an ice box. Que no, cuando él tenía como siete años no tenían frigorífico, tenían un, una neverita, supongo que no como una caja de o sea, ice box, supongo sí, una neverita. And that was pretty normal for people. That, this is in the 40s. I'm talking about. Uh, I was born in 1943, so this is uh, in the late 40s. And the ice man would come, bring the ice, and put it in the ice box to keep the food cold. Y venía el, esto era a finales de los 40, él nació en el 43, y venía el, el, el hombre del hielo <laughs> y, y llegaba a las casas y llenaba la, la hielera o la nevera de, de hielo. ¿no? And while he did that, uh, we had an old upright piano in the living room. And after he delivered the ice, he would always sit down and play the piano for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes or so, while the ice melted in the truck. <laughs> Decía que, que el hielero, o como se llame, siempre venía a su casa y tocaba un rato en el, en el piano de pared que tenían en el, en el salón. So he wasn't a school musician. All he could play was the blues. And that gave me a very healthy respect for the blues and the blues tradition. Que no, es, no era un pianista que hubiera estudiado y tal, pero que lo, que lo que conocía era el blues. Y dice que eso le dio una manera así de, de acercarse con mucho respeto al, al blues. So I'm going to demonstrate, if I can, uh, what I heard, a little of what I heard in my living room. Now, he sang sometimes, he sang. I am not going to sing. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. You want to hear me sing. <laughs> anyway, he was, um, like I said, what I call a folk musician. You know? Va a tocar un poco de el rollo en el que tocaba el hombre. So that's what I heard as a kid growing up uh, in my living room until we got a refrigerator. Que eso era lo que escuchaba de chico en su salón mientras crecía, mientras no tenían un frigorífico. As I got older, um, another big influence was uh, when I was in junior high school. Uh, I heard uh, on a recording somebody had a uh, pianist named Tommy Flanagan. <laughs> and he became my hero until he passed away, maybe 10 years ago. 
eh, que mientras estaba en el instituto eh, alguien tenía una graba un, algún disco de Tommy Flanagan que se convirtió en una de sus vamos su héroe. What I loved about Tommy's playing, uh, number one, was his touch. He had a very light, delicate touch, and the way he phrased was very, very smooth. Very, very smooth. It was like um, telling a story with punctuation and periods and commas and everything. It was, it was very incredible. Le gustaba mucho su toque, que era muy ligero, y la manera de frasear, que era como suave, así, natural, y que era como muy similar al lenguaje, ¿no? Que podía sentir con la articulación y tal, que estaba puntualizando. And I'm going to try and demonstrate that for you uh, by playing the song that I first heard him play uh, on, on a record. This was a recording with Miles Davis and Sonny Rollins and... Uh, uh, Art Taylor, drums, and Doug Watkins on the bass. And it was a Dave Brubeck uh, composition called In Your Own Sweet Way, In Your Own Sweet Way. Va a tocar ese tema. <laughs>
Thank you. So uh, I hope you noticed. One of the things, again, was uh, the light touch. That's, uh, that was one of his hall hallmarks. And also, uh, his lines were like this, very smooth, very fluid, you know, very fluid lines. That's what attracted me to his playing. And as I said, uh, up until he passed away, maybe 10, 15 years ago, he was my hero. He really was. Que, <coughs> bueno, que dice que como hemos podido ver que ese, ese tipo de fraseo así suave y la articulación y el toque ligero, que esa fueron los elementos así que primero que, que marcan el tipo de toque, bueno, la, la manera de tocar de Tommy Flanagan y lo que le ha traído más de, de él, que ha sido su héroe hasta hace 10, 15 años que, que falleció. Ok, now, uh, another uh, uh, big influence for me was Thelonious Monk. And Thelonious Monk's playing is uh, like the opposite of Tommy's playing. Uh, Thelonious Monk was a very percussive player, He played very strong. And his playing was also okay. Let me stop. Go ahead. <laughs> no, que otra gran influencia para él ha sido Telonius Monk, que que es como la, el, el, lo diametralmente opuesto de la manera de tocar de Tommy Flanagan, ¿no? Que tiene un toque super percusivo y duro. So, if you had to draw a graph of Telonius Monk's playing, it would look like this: very sharp, jagged edges, and his playing was characterized by sharp, you know, percussive touch, but also very close intervals, like minor seconds and major seconds, which at the time would be a dissonance, you know, that kind of sound. And then also very wide intervals, like a major six, that, those kind of intervals, okay? Dice que si dibujáramos un gráfico de la manera de tocar de Monk, que sería como, que sería como ángulos abruptos, así, ¿no? Que, y un elemento que tiene, aparte de tocar percusivo, son los intervalos muy cerrados, que se perciben así como menos armoniosos y, y también muy abiertos, ¿no? Ok, I'm going to try and, again, try and demonstrate for you uh, by playing two compositions. One is... Uh, a Thelonious Monk composition called Light Blue. And the other song is a standard entitled uh, I'm Getting Sentimental Over You. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Va a tocar esos dos temas, eh, un poco intentando tocar en el estilo de, de Monk. And the reason is that uh, Monk was such a stylist Anything he played, if it was a standard or whatever, it sounded like he wrote it because his style was so strong, you know. So um, the standard, I'm Getting Sentimental Over You, was actually made famous by, uh, I don't know if you guys know, the Dorsey brothers, Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey. Well, that was uh, one of them, I think it was Jimmy Dorsey. That was his theme song for, for, for his big band. Had nothing to do with the Monk, but... He played it, so it sounded like he wrote it. Dice que todo lo que son, tocaba Monk, fuera escrito por él o no, sonaba a que lo había escrito él, porque su, su estilo es como muy definido, muy personal. Y que el, okay. <laughs> que el, el estándar que va a tocar, que se llama I'm Getting Sentimental Over You, eh, que era un tema que no tiene nada que ver con Monk, pero al tocarlo él, que sonaba como si fuera suyo. Ok, so first is Monk's composition, Light Blue, Light Blue.
So Dizzy Gillespie used to tell me, when you make a mistake, make it loud. <laughs> and then do it again. So people will say, oh, that was some great stuff he played. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm going to play uh, um, the standard, I'm Getting Sentimental Over You. Okay, there. Where's my translator? Oh, there he is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, there are many, many other people who have been uh, big influences on me. Uh, McCoy Tyner, 
for instance, who's from my hometown, Philadelphia. Um, Art Tatum, who was uh, too unbelievable. It was just unbelievable. I'm going to try and demonstrate so you can get an idea. Art Tatum. Art Tatum, for me, should I stop? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, que ha habido otros muchos pianistas que han sido grandes influencias para él. Dos de ellos son McCoy Tyner, que es de su ciudad natal también, y Art Tatum, que es, que es increíble. Que va ahora a intentar demostrar un par de, par de ejemplos. Yeah, for me, Art Tatum was a once in a lifetime kind of person. His technique was uh, unbelievable. And uh, he had a very adventurous sense of harmony, you know. So I'm going to demonstrate, try and try and demonstrate uh, a little of that. Uh, please bear in mind that I am not Art Tatum, <laughs> okay? <laughs> But I'll do my very best. Dice que Art Tatum era una. Go ahead, go ahead. Sir? Eh, eh, que, era una de, que es una de estas personas de, que hay uno, bueno, ha dicho uno en la vida, no sé, como uno cada generación o algo así, y que realmente su, su técnica era mm, inhumana y su sentido de la armonía, ¿no? También muy, muy especial. Y que recordemos, por favor, que él no es Art Tatum, que lo va a intentar, <laughs> pero que, <laughs> que bueno. Que <laughs> so, this is a, a piece from the American Songbook that every jazz musician has to know. It's called Body and Soul, Body and Soul. Thank you. 
Thank you. Now, my only regret is that I never got to hear him live. I never got to hear uh, Art Tatum live. I'm kind of thankful I did not, because it would scared me to death. Ah, pues tenía razón, estaba apagado. Sorry, technical problem. Eh, que, que es una pena para él que no ha tenido la oportunidad de escuchar nunca a Arta en, en directo, aunque por otro lado se alegra porque cree que se hubiera muerto de un infarto. Ok. Um, I could go on and on, but I have a concert to play. <laughs> um, so before, but does anybody have any questions they would like to ask? And remember... The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. <laughs> no questions. Music, life, love. Ah, perde, está, pre, está, hay alguna pregunta. <laughs> ¿Qué, perde, hay algo, alguien tiene. Yeah. What, what brings you to Almeria? <laughs> I was asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I've, I've been to. Um, Andalusia a few times, uh, Sevilla and Granada. Uh, and I was in Spain all last summer, uh, in San Javier, uh, San Sebastian. Uh, so I come to Spain quite often, So and I, I love it. Uh, I love the food, the people are warm. You can't say that about every place, <laughs> you know? So that's what brings me here. <laughs> And this gentleman here. <laughs> <laughs> Any other so questions? I, I do have one, actually. Oh, I, yeah. If, yeah? You, he, he asked if you, are, if you are, were ever in touch with flamenco piano playing or any... Flamenco? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, there's one guy I heard. I heard in Havana. I think his name was Chano. Chano. Chano Dominguez. Yeah. Yeah. I heard him in Havana. Yeah. Um, but other than that, my only experience has been with Paco de Lucia, yeah. gu guitar. You know. <laughs> but and you played with him? No, no, okay, no, okay, no, okay. no, no, no. I, I got to. I did get to hear him live. Hmm. Uh, we both got awarded um, honorary doctorates the same day at at Berkeley College in Boston. So I got to hear him. He's amazing. He was amazing. Mm -hmm. eh, bueno, te, te, tra, traduc sí que que no, no, que ha escuchado a Chano Domínguez y, y que aparte de eso su contacto así más directo ha sido con Paco de Lucía que tuvo la suerte de verlo en, en directo. ¿no? Anyone else? Eh, Julia. So what would be your main advice for a young jazz student, someone who is, I don't know, starting up or kind of starting to, to find out? Can, can ah, so from, from here, maybe not from, let's say, the US or a context where the music belongs so much in, into the culture, but... but claro, claro, claro. Some, somebody from here or, or in general, but some, a young student who is? Um, I think my advice would just be, first of all, beyond practicing, which is important, <laughs> uh, but listening to the music. It's important to listen to the music, all kinds of music, you know. Uh, the experience I had growing up was playing in, in, in for dance bands, for all kinds of stuff. Mm. So I became conversant with Latin music as, as much as I could. Latin music, Brazilian music. Uh, uh, I used to listen to rhythm and blues. So become conversant with all kinds of music because no matter what kind of music you play, there are only 12 notes. 
You know, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> there are only 12 notes. Dice que, bueno, eh, que su principal consejo sería, aparte de estudiar, eh, está en, o sea, escuchar música y todo tipo de música y que, que bueno, ha dado un par de ejemplos de que, que escuchaba el rhythm and blues y, y otros tipos de música y que al final, independientemente del tipo de música que toque, hay 12 notas, que no, <laughs> que no hay mucho más y que al final hay tanto en común que te, que te enriqueces así como... And then the other thing is to always try and play with people who are better than you mm. so that you can learn from them. Y lo otro know. es intentar tocar siempre con gente que toca mejor que tú. Okay, it looks like people are coming in for the <laughs> yeah. concert. So, how many of you are staying for the concert? I, I think all of us. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up <laughs> because we started at 8 o'clock. Or nine o'clock. Yeah, nine. Nine o'clock. <laughs> nine o'clock. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.